नेक्स्ट रिएक्शन इज हाइड्रोबोरेशन ऑक्सीडेशन हाइड्रोबोरेशन ऑक्सीडेशन गिव्स अस अ product uh, now we'll have the same kind of alkene as we had for hydration and we ha as we had for the last reaction oxymercuration demercuration and we are having the same structure for hydroboration oxidation last time we had markovnikov product without rearrangement this time we'll have anti markovnikov product without rearrangement so oh group will get attached to the one of the carbon out of these two carbon forming alkene which is less substituted so that would be anti to the markovnikov rule that is anti markovnikov product without rearrangement now if if we have a different kind of suppose this is the structure then in this case these two carbon this is one and this is two these two carbon are making pi bond now in this case it will get attached to c2 because c2 is less substituted and there would be no rearrangement in this case as well and when we see the mechanism it would be clear why shouldn't be any rearrangement here and the make uh, and the reagent here is diborane we take borane actually borane bh3 is borane and borane exists in the form of dimer in the form of b2h6 diborane so to write the reagent we write b2h6 diborane we take diborane in the first step and then we take hydrogen peroxide in alkaline medium we take a base and hydrogen peroxide now let's see the mechanism how it goes now boron is a important element and in organic chemistry because bh bh3 is a important lewis acid if you see the if if you know the atomic number of boron boron has atomic number 5 and if i write the electronic configuration it would be 1s2 2s2 2p1 1s2 2s2 2p1 in the box diagram now boron makes three bond that means this electron of 2s2 goes in excited state and goes into the orbital of 2p so it becomes 2s1 2p1 these are the three unpaired electron and these three unpaired electron participate in bond formation and you have one of the p orbital as empty so there's a pairing with these three and boron has six electron all together so it, it it doesn't have its octet complete and it has it has one of its orbital as empty so this empty orbital of boron accepts pair of electron to form a octet to complete its octet so it's a good lewis acid fine so generally i'll draw a empty or bicyclo boron like this and when i draw empty p or bicyclo i'm referring to this empty p or bicyclo of 2p which is empty right so boron is a good lewis acid it has one of its 2p or bicyclo empty now let's proceed now initially we have not added this hydrogen peroxide we have just have b2h6 and b2h6 is a dimer of bs3 we'll carry on the reaction with bs3 because during the reaction the dimer form breaks it comes in the mono monomer form of bs3 now this is alkene this is bs3 this is electron rich this is electron deficient as we have seen now what would happen electron will get start to get transfer from this alkene to boron now boron has a empty p orbital as we have seen a moment before so some electronic density will start getting transferred to this empty orbital so boron will start to gain some electron when boron starts to gain some electron it also starts to gain some some negative charge because uh, electronic density is increasing in its orbital but to counter that negative charge the positive charge of the nucleus is not increasing but so it will start to develop a negative charge and because of that negative charge increasingly it will start to become unstable after a after some amount 
after sufficient amount of electronic density will get transferred. Now what would happen is when this carbon, this carbon, the terminal carbon will start to make a bond with boron and start to break a bond with this C2. Fine. So there is no problem for C1. Previously it was making a bond with C2. Now it will make a bond with boron. So life for C1 is same as it was before. Boron has a start to gain a electron gain some electron and initially some energy will be released because of bond formation between carbon and boron. But C2 is losing its bond because C2 was making bond with C1 and now C1 has started to make bond with boron. So C2 is losing its electron. So C2 will start to have, gen have some plus charge polarity, certain electron deficiency shown by del plus. Boron will start to develop some negative charge because it is gaining outer electronic source, outer electron that is not being balanced by its nucleus. So boron will develop some negative charge, C2 will develop some positive charge. As the process proceeds, this plus charge on C2 will start to grow higher and the negative charge on boron will start to grow higher. Now boron is, does not have high electronegativity value. So negative charge on boron will not be very stable. Positive charge on this carbon will not be very stable either. So if something can happen that will stabilize both of them, that thing will happen. And what can happen is, after, after sufficient amount of negative charge has developed on boron, boron can lose one of its hydrogen in the form of H-. Suppose all of the electronic density, just for the sake of understanding, suppose I show the reaction. Suppose this bond has completely broken, this pi bond then this carbon C2 will develop a complete positive charge and a bond between carbon and boron will be completely formed, right? So boron will develop a complete negative charge. Now if hydride, one hydride comes out, so that negative charge on boron will also be gone. So boron is left, I'm sorry, boron will have, it will be BS3 when one hydride comes out, there will be two hydrogen with boron. Suppose I bring that hydride out. So with this hydride, negative charge from boron will also come out. And this hydride can form a bond with the C plus get attached here. So this can happen. But this will not, this, this the whole process will be a gradual process. All the bonds will be forming simultaneously. A bond between carbon and boron would be forming. Simultaneously the bond between boron and hydrogen would be breaking. And simultaneously a bond between hydrogen and this carbon would be forming. So all, all of the bond break cleavage and bond formation will happen simultaneously. So to show this properly, let me redraw it. So this electron is going into the orbital of boron. And this electron is going into the orbital of this carbon. So when this process completes, this hydrogen comes with this carbon and this carbon forms a bond with boron. And we get this intermediate. Fine. Now to, to write it properly, let me write it like this. R C S 2 C S 2 and this boron. Now boron again is forming three bonds. Now that means boron again has an empty orbital. So unreacted alkene can again put its electron into this boron. Boron will again start to develop negative charge. Boron will again lose one hydrogen and will go to the carbon of another alkene. So what, when this step proceeds one more time, what we would have is this hydrogen will come out and will have another alkyl group attached with boron just if we repeat this process when this completes again boron is making three bond again boron has an empty orbital now the third unreacted alkene like this can put its electron into the orbital of boron there is one hydrogen one that can be transferred to the carbon of that alkene and after completion of this process this hydrogen also would come out and a third alkyl part will go to boron. Now again boron is making three bond. Now again boron has an empty p orbital. But if this time a fourth alkene puts its electron into boron, 
boron will start to develop a negative charge but to get rid of its negative charge it doesn't have any more hydrogen so that hydride can come out and negative charge would be lost so boron when it develops negative charge it doesn't have any any technology to bring itself out of its misery of carrying negative charge so because boron doesn't have any more hydrogen so no more alkene will put such electron into boron